Good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning here anyway. I'm shooting in the morning because it's going to be so hot today. And I mean, the woods are leafed out. Can you hear the birds, maybe? I hope you can. Windows are open. I don't have my fan on because it's just so quiet and peaceful. I wish you peace and quiet, whatever time of day you're watching this. So welcome to the quiet zone and welcome to another Oracle unboxing. Today, I am continuing the series of Lucy Cavendish decks with Foxfire, the Kitsune Oracle. And I didn't know about this deck and I was looking at all the Lucy Cavendish that I have and I looked up you know, just a list of her decks to see what I was missing. Or actually, I was looking to see which was her first deck. And I saw this and it was like, oh, holy shit. And I bought it. It was the last one they had. Mm. And this is my son is is Fox Medicine and Kitsune. So this is Japanese. Kitsune is the Japanese word for fox. So this is a Japanese based deck. Look at her fox mask here. And I apologize, there are, you know, shadows coming in, the sun is coming through the screen. I apologize, but not really, because it looks beautiful. 45 cards, okay, wait. Lucy Cavendish, sorry, I just burped my coffee. Did I finish it? I did. Okay. <laughs> Lucy Cavendish, artwork by Meredith Dillman, so a new artist for her. I don't think that artist was involved in the Dragon Fae. Uh, published by Blue Angel, look at the little foxes there. 45 Cards and Guidebook Set, artwork by Meredith Dillman. You are about to enter a magical realm, a secret world of cherry blossom trees, ginkgo plants that talk, dragons that create the day and the night, and elves that guard the sacred groves. In this enchanted land, there exists the most ancient of powers, Foxfire. And the guardians of Foxfire are the remarkable Kitsune. With origins in ancient Eastern spirituality, the Kitsune are legendary shape-shifting foxes who work with the Shinto deity, um, deity Inari. Loyal, wise, and very clever, Kitsune bring good fortune and abundance and give sound sage advice for all matters of the mind, body, and soul. Practical and mystical, the Kitsune will weave about you strong, protective energies and bestow upon you their many gifts and blessings. And there are several images down below. 2018 is the copyright from Blue Angel Publishing. And, you know, there could be an entire video done on um, cultural appropriation and whether you consider this to be an example of that. I mean, we, we are honoring artwork of that tradition. Um, it, it, it's a very complicated issue. It really is. And artists struggle with this all over. Um it's a big issue in the henna art community um, of people, you know, appropriating culture. But the fact is, henna is not a sacred thing. So we look at, you know, when you're when you're taking something that is sacred to another culture and appropriating it to make money, that's kind of the definition of cultural appropriation. And it could be seen as um, that that applies here, since we're talking about Shinto and Japanese deity and everything. But I mean. Wow, I don't know. And ultimately, the answer to that question lies in the culture that originated the images, the artwork. The culture has the last say-so on that. So we have a blank for whatever reason. We have a nice book. Oh, look at that great image. I, you know, regardless of the appropriation question, I thoroughly enjoy this deck. I'm enjoying the artwork already. Um, card backs. Card fronts. <clears throat> the richness within. And boy, is it ever there. Look at that. Wake up fairies. There we go. The art is very rich. She's certainly um, being faithful to the Japanese culture in the style of art and in depicting the kimono. So the richness within, acceptance. So the cards, Lucy Cavendish decks usually have a title and then there's some keywords. It seems like these are um, all in one. Acceptance, 
<laughs> Look at the little side eye there. Hmm. So now we have an actual fox in a kimono. Tea ceremony. Oh, look at that. Look at the hand positions on the bowl. This is very, I mean, obviously the person did their research into Japanese culture. So there is some honoring going on. The way the kimono comes on the back of the neck is right. The way the tea bowl is being held is right. So if you're going to do it, do it right is what I would say. Call forth the waves. Look at that. Oh, the images are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Look at the leaves in the hair. Wow. The gob the golden the golden moment it looks like goblin <clears throat> doesn't look like g-o-b-l-e-n the goblin but it's G golden the golden moment <clears throat> sorry my allergies are rocking rare knowledge that's the image from the front past lives <laughs> cross-cultural there look at the look at the border here this artist is fabulous. The gift of connection. Wow. Hope. Hope is my son's very, very, very best friend. So seeing that adorable fox representing my son and the card of hope is just very sweet. Grace. Look at the cranes. Oh, my. And like I said, if you're going to appropriate to do it with this much respect and beauty, sunlight after darkness. You know, the, the um, okay, I see we've got cherry blossoms here, so that indicates spring, sunlight after, you know, the long dark of winter. Other than that, I don't really see the, the depiction of sunlight after darkness. So nice to have a good, a well-titled car, card there that says, here's what this card means. Be still a while. Look at that. Oh, I just love them. Fleeting beauty. And again, the cherry blossoms, indeed. Everything is fleeting. In tea ceremony... Um, there's a phrase, ichigo ichie, which means one time, one moment. And um, it means that there's th we will never, ever experience this moment again, no matter, you know, every year spring comes around, every year holidays come around, every year, you know, oh, we go to this particular event every year, but every time it's different, every moment, no matter how much we try to set up and recapture something, Every moment is fleeting. Every moment is unique. And so that brings the appreciation and the call to be in that moment so that you can fully appreciate what will never happen again. The awakening. So tea ceremony and, you know, life. But, but the Japanese arts really are based on the fact that life is fleeting and we must be present in every moment to fully appreciate the beauty of it. The Awakening, look at the dragon. The Sentinel, oh, ho, oh. Now we get a fairy, or no, the dragon is, she, she has the wings, not the dragon. Oh, I love it. Time to restore. And because my son is Kitsune and I went to order another one of these decks for him and they were out, I got the last one. So... Time to restore growth. Oh, look at the, the radiance of that. To dance with joy. Indeed. And look at the little foxes in play mode. The creation of light. The garden of the night. I'm looking here. I'm just now seeing. All right. It's not present in other cards. What I was seeing here 
is this. That little symbol. And I wonder, um, the artist again, Meredith Dillman. That is her signature. There's an M and a D. So that's the signature of the artist, which also tells me that these paintings were in existence and then a deck was made. So may, Or maybe at least this painting was in existence and others were created for the deck. I'm always fascinated in an artist's process um, in creating a deck. I, I have a, a friend who's an artist um, that makes the most incredible things, and she contacted me once about making a deck and and a tarot deck, which is a tall order. And my advice to her was, look at what you already have. You already have a deck, and at least an oracle deck. And an oracle deck, you get to set the rules. So if you have 50 paintings, you can say, here's my deck. It's going to have 50 cards. Um, with tarot, you have a structure that you're working within. And that's a great, I mean, nothing saying you can't do that as well. But um but again, it just takes me back to how do these artists, and especially collaborators, where you have an author of a deck and then an artist, um, how do they work together? And sometimes I think it's that the writer sees an artist's work and says, please work with me. Let me see your work so we can make it into a deck. Watch and listen carefully. And in that sense, you know, the artist is, is equal with the author. Um, then you've got things where there's an author that has a very specific idea of what they want the deck to be, and they contact the artist and say, here's what I want you to create. And in those terms, you know, the artist is kind of coming behind the author. Does it matter? I don't know. Immortality. Look at the bird. And then we see that we're dealing with little fairies. She's got wings too. And more of a Korean style of clothing, I think. Born with a gift, and now we step completely outside of Japan. Interesting. Want to know why? Delight. That's very Japanese. I want to see if they talk about Korea here, too. Make a wish. Ooh. Make a wish on a falling star there. Touching the future. And there we see the, the artist's signature again. Empowerment. Look at, she's got like little fishy fins. She's like a koi. Wow, that's very cool. Transcendence. Rituals and offerings. Oh, can I be in on that ritual, please? It looks like a wonderful one. I want to be there so bad. Willing entanglement. Ooh. Kind of a hanged man vibe, wouldn't you say? You know, she's bound up and looking very peaceful because it's willing. And there's a moon and a star down here. There's a moon here. And the little symbols hanging from the trees. There's like a harp strung here. Ooh, beautiful. A time to walk alone. There's a very witchy one. So this isn't all just, you know, Japanese culture. Find a place to withdraw to. And I think that, I mean, I was going to say the unifying factor would be foxes, but the foxes are not on every card. Find a place to withdraw to. Ooh, I love the fall colors and the earthiness of that. Yep. Find a place to withdraw to. Go out in the woods. Go out in nature. Look at the branchiness of the hair. That's gorgeous. Leave behind what is no longer you. And again, we are not in Japanese culture anymore. Beauty of age. Look at the wisteria. Oh. So this deck definitely belongs in the fairy series, I'm happy to say. The noble one. I love irises. Almost named my daughter Iris. Memories of the Forgotten Self. As we go, we seem to be getting a little more away from Japanese culture. Sharing your wisdom. That's sort of Japanese-esque, kimono-esque. Bringer of change. First male in the deck. So yeah, bringer of change. <laughs> Beneath the surface. 
mermaid. So we're just branching out all over the place here. Threshold. I like these shoulderless kimono. That's pretty saucy. And look at her wings. Oh, God, these are just so beautiful. The range of color there. Threefold per protection. Threefold protection. So she's got a trident. And more mermaid. Shadow dancer. Look at her wings. Ooh, I like the, the Cruella de Villish thing <laughs> happening there. Foxfire. Follow the signs. So I like when we actually have the kitsune of the, the woman with the ears. Coming of age. Oh, the fox with nine tails. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yes, nine. And there's the artist's signature again. And then we come back to the beginning. So very, very interesting deck. Absolutely gorgeous deck. Let's take a look at the book. <clears throat> 2018. Um, okay, we've got a quote down here. At 50 years of age, the fox can turn into a human. At 100, it can know something a thousand miles away, and at a thousand years, it can communicate with heaven. That is Guo Pu, 20, 276 AD, a folklorist. Obviously, Guo Pu it's got to be Chinese. So, Foxfire, a prelude. Let's look at the prelude. Um, all right, let's read this. In ancient times, there were lands on which burned fires that possessed po powers far beyond those of ordinary flames. I apologize for tripping all over my tongue. These fires healed, lit the path before the people, kept their soul flame alight, and sparked many a passionate idea to those ready to receive them. In those places which are known now as legends, the holy fires burned and were fed and fanned by priests and priestesses whose hair over time became as red as the flames they so lovingly tended. But the first land, the one spoken of as Mu or Lemuria, was doomed, and the survivors fled the sinking shores in their wooden boats, and some carried the sacred flames to the other lands they found themselves within. Those who made it to the empire known now as Atlantis shared the holy fire's powers with those who said they could be entrusted with such divine energies. But history repeats, friends, when we are not aware of the shape, thing, the shape things take. Only this time the event took place because the fires were misused, as were many other sacred things, and there was a great cataclysm. The sky turned gray-green, the land shook and trembled and split open, and finally those sublime lands were lost beneath waves as tall as the storm clouds. Yet the flames survived in mysterious ways, swallowed by the priests and the priestesses who traveled to many other lands, and some who carried the Lemurian bloodlines, who we all know are shapeshifters, transformed themselves into other beings to keep the holy fires burning and to protect the sacred flame from being misused ever again. And some of these beings, friends, made their way to the east, where they are now known only in their form as foxes. Their origins are locked inside memories that are sleeping inside the human ones. They are known now as the Kitsune, and the holy flames are called Foxfire. Its power is returning to a world ready now for an awakening. Cool. Dear secret, dear seeker, let me share with you the ways of the Kitsune. Um, these are the words I heard standing in a temple that felt timeless, ancient, right in the center of the great modern city of Tokyo. It was there that I truly felt for the first time the power of the keepers of the holy fire, the kitsune. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so she talks about her, her personal connection with them. Um, let's see. It wasn't until I visited Japan many times that I began to feel my way into a world where foxes were viewed as supernatural intermediaries with otherworldly powers and abilities who worked directly with one of the most revered and esteemed Shinto deities of this mystical land. In Japan, foxes are known as kitsune. I noticed them on my first trip to Japan. How could I not, for they were omnipresent? I stood before shrines dedicated to kitsune outside small local stores and ordinary homes and government buildings, all adorned with foxes standing wary and alert. I began to notice details. Sometimes they were shown holding the grain of Inari, the deity many kitsune serve in their mouths. Sometimes they were white, sometimes they had scrolls in their mouths, sometimes they held round balls. Hmm, curious, I connected with them silently in a state like that, just letting them get to know me. 
for years before I asked to know about them. I researched and asked and spoke to Japanese people about the meaning of these statues and shrines dedicated to these spirit foxes. Why was there grain in the mouths? Why did they hold balls? Why did they have books in their mouths? Why were they in the temples dedicated to the deity Inari? Why did some have more than one tail? Why were there thousands of white foxes near the Tory gates of temples? Why did people bring these foxes little gifts of finely sliced and fried tofu, which I came to know was called abura-age? And most of all, what was the nature of the otherworldly and wild, bright fire they were said to possess? So she did her research. And then there's a chapter on Inari and Kitsune, um, <clears throat> which I'm not going to read. Age brings wisdom to Kitsune and magical abilities. Foxfire, the transformational flame of the Kitsune, the diverse magics of the Kitsune. Who you will meet within your cards, dragons, sacred trees, mer beings, shape shifting beings, and kitsune. So she does this with her decks and talks about, you know, the, the here are repeating things that you will see. And I like that. I like that, you know, she's consciously defining the threads that move through the deck. And it does help you to chunk these images and the symbols um, into something that's going to make more sense to you and, and be again, more of a cohesive whole. How to work with Foxfire, the Foxfire, the Kitsune Oracle, how to shuffle your cards, cutting the cards, reversals, the hidden comes to light, leaping cards, when the cards take charge, reading with your Kitsune, a one card reading, a three card, Kitsune's threefold reading, the four seasons spread. So we've got past, present, future, we've got the, the four seasons, nine tails reading, uh, inspired by the nine-tailed foxes who have developed immense powers over their thousand years of life. So these are the ones that have lived for a thousand years. And what do those do again? Uh, it can communicate with heaven. All right. So those are the most powerful ones. Card one, my power at birth, a power I developed in childhood. Power that I grew when I became a teenager, developed as an adult. I have yet to develop. I possess but am not aware of. I possess but do not use. I can used to help others, and the power I will be remembered for. That's a really cool reading. That's very deep and involved. And then there's Celtic Cross. Caring for the energy of your Kitsune Oracle. And then card meanings. So let's look at immortality. I was curious, what was I curious about there? The bird, maybe, or the fairy? Um, let's just take a look. You are lifetimes long seeker, and your soul has journeyed and traveled through skins and forms and elements. So each card just has one big thing. There's not like keywords. So she departs there. Um, in this lifetime, you're being offered wisdom of all that has gone before in order to continue the healing journey of your own soul. You're surrounded by the energy of the peach blossom tree, a great old tree that grows deep within the Kitsune realms. And those who reach it are small compared to its mighty branches. You are now climbing the tree of immortality. And as you climb, your soul is refining itself, becoming more pure, more wise, shedding that once that shedding all that once held you back. The tree of the immortals whispers to you that you are one of its children, that you're immortal. So, um, the, so yeah, we are, she doesn't talk about the parts of the image. I don't see the bird mentioned here. She just gives a more general overall meaning. Um, you were asked not to attempt to force some kind of inhuman perfection on yourself. Instead, the tree of immortality asks you to embrace yourself and love yourself with patience and kindness. For with this love, there will come a flowering of the soul. For now, though, child of the peach flowers, sit a while in the branches of the tree of immortality, the tree that has seen infinite ages, infinite changes. So, you know, I, I think this is a great one card deck. When you, I'm thinking of that nine card reading and, you know, how when you're doing something that involved and you're really looking for the essence of something, certainly you can get that essence um, from the title. And when you read the meaning, you're going to get, you know, the more of the essence described, but um, to go through and do like a Celtic cross and read all the way through each of those things each time uh, would be pretty burdensome. Let's look at the born with a gift one, because this was where we went like radically outside of the Japanese uh, flavor. I mean, there was the one, the first one we hit, but it was like about past lives. 
So the cultural change made sense there. Let's see what it is here. You, dear one, have been given something beyond price, rare and treasured and magical beyond compare. This is the gift of true treasure, an egg of knowledge, within which is sealed thousands of memories and messages from the wise ravens. When this card comes to you, know that you're being given the gift of time to use wisely and a gift of knowledge and wisdom to be applied. Okay. Born with a gift. So it again, she doesn't, in, in this deck, she doesn't talk about the actual images and what's going on. I mean, she did name the ravens there and the egg, but nothing about the clothing and why we're looking at a whole different culture here. So interesting. That is... Kind of an interesting departure for Lucy. Her writing is still fabulous. I will say that, that, you know, reading this. So let's ask for one. <clears throat> Gonna shuffle through three times. I'm asking for a message from my viewers. Whoever's looking at this today, I'm going to cut. Shuffle and cut. One more, and then I will cut. Okay, message for my viewers, please. Tea ceremony. Well, good, because I want to see what she says about tea ceremony. It is time for you now, seeker, to quietly contemplate the inner and the outer life. Just as this kitsune is taking part in a moment to revere the tea and dress carefully for the occasion, to savor the flavor and the aroma, to note the texture of the cup and to hear the water being poured into the cup, you too must now still the mind and bring yourself to an awareness of all that is about you right in this moment and all that lies within you. This person has been to tea ceremony. And I mean, she just brought it back for me because one of my favorite things when I'm hosting is the pouring of the water and just the sound, the sound that it makes going into the cup and you pour like two thirds into the cup and then the rest goes back into the comma and then you know the the sounds of tea ceremony watching the steam rising from the pot i mean she's been there for all around you are signs of the world that will not endure the things we feel are so important so what is the essence of buddhism i did my step into my library Buddha, buddhism version um last week and talked about how you know the mind training of Buddhism is grappling with the fact that everything changes. Everything is going to change. Everything is going to deteriorate and go away. How do we come to terms with this and our, our need to hold on? So look upon one or two of them now and contemplate that they will not be here always and neither will you. Thus the worry and the stress we force ourselves to endure in the service of the temporary and the impermanent is unnecessary. Give yourself this time out of time, a sacred moment, a transformation of awareness, and see what is about you. Note it. Now turn your attention within, quietly, without criticism or praise, and observe who you are in this moment and what you have become. Breathe quietly, and you will find a moment's peace amidst all the whirl of the world, and you will feel yourself stepping outside of the frenzy, and into a space where there is soul, where there is beauty, where there is timelessness. From this moment, take some time to simplify some of your own life practices. Give away several possessions which are no longer used, worked with, or connected with. Make some space in your life for quiet, still contemplation. Reduce the drama that so many find compelling. And turn your heart and hands to the creation of harmony a practice that can offer you so much peace. And of course, you may wish to slowly, with great consciousness, drink a healing tea, all the while aware of its heat, its scent, its taste, and the colors and sounds all about you. Welcome back to your own five senses, the great gifts of the Spirit. Never see them again as less, for when they are appreciated and worked with, they are gateways to moments of sublime beauty even enlightenment. Did you notice what happened while I was reading that? Just reading it made me slow down and get quiet and get peaceful. And part of that was that she really evoked tea ceremony for me from the beginning. And um, 
and that is Lucy's writing. Lucy Cavendish is gifted. She is a priestess. She connects with spirit, and she's a transmitter. You know, she's a, she's a true vessel, as are her decks. What comes through is essence, and as she was describing the essence of this card, it actually took me there and came through. So, as always, man, I love her decks. They are fantastic. Um, I, I just ordered a new one, actually an old one, um, that I did not have of hers. And there are, a and then as I'm ordering, I'm finding out there are more that I don't have. So I will be, you know what? Wait, why am I keeping this? Don't know, but I am. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will be ordering some more Lucy Cavendish decks so we can round out the series here. Whether I can actually get them now or not, I don't know. It depends on what I can afford. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And there's a donate button below. If you donate and put a note in there of a deck that you would like me to review, I will do it just for you. And I appreciate all of your support. I appreciate you being there. I love doing these. And look at the sunlight, you guys. What a gorgeous day. Enjoy it however you can. Before we get into big heat and air conditioner season, go out and enjoy this lovely spring. Um, until I see you on Monday with another Tarot unboxing, I wish you peace. Wash your hands. Stay safe. This is the Zen Witch. Blessed be.